this up because I wonder if any of you have been to this place or recognize this place. Um, I'll give you a clue. It's not far from Deer Park. <laughs> I think some of you may have been here. Uh, yes, this is the Deer Park Prairie. And Aldo Leopold, as you know, hopefully all of you know this gentleman, uh, he was very visionary, and I think he says it well. When we see land as a community to which we belong, we may begin to love and respect it. And that's what we try to get across to the children. Uh, they come to us sometimes, and they don't have that same passion or love for the outdoors as we may have had as children or as adults. So we're, we're taking them out of the four walls, and we're immersing them in a campus habitat that is very rich in wildlife and exploration and discovery and journal writing. So what is a habitat? We start out with the teachers talking about at these teacher workshops, what are the basic components? And the same with the kids. Can you tell me what the four things might be that we're looking for? So certainly food. You've got to have a place that the wildlife can come to get food. You certainly need a water source of some type, whether it's a bird bath or just a, a, a dish on the ground with water in it that the butterflies can come and cuddle or the frogs or the lizards can get to. Uh, shelter. We've got the Purple Martin House that provides shelter and this colony keeps coming back and it's just fascinating to watch the kids want to clean that purple barn house and get it ready by Valentine's Day because they know these birds are coming up from Brazil and they want to have a nice home to shelter in. And then of course space. So we've tried to take a very small area. So if you build it, will they come? And most likely, if you build it right, they will come. So learning happens inside the individual. Giving the kids the opportunity to master what they love means they will love what they learn. Do you, will they have to attend class and listen to speakers? They have to do a certain amount of service work, and they have to help us maintain our site. So tomorrow, at 11 a.m., 22 fourth graders are all going to be certified junior Texas naturalists, and they will get their dragonfly pin and their certificate, and we will have you know, passed another group through. Um, we try to do quality lessons for that type of learning. Uh, we give them lots of learning uh, opportunities. They have uh, access to expertise that is not limited to just me as a teacher. I want them to learn from as many people as I can get in there. And sometimes I have to kind of stop the, the presenters and say, you've got an hour or an hour and 15 minutes because I don't want them sitting for two or three hours. They need to be out in the field learning the things that are outside. Critical thinking, incredible critical thinking questions are written in their journals. They have to write two questions to research every class that they are with me. So this really kind of sets the stage for next week. What do I need to look at? What questions do I get answered that they are really curious about? And sometimes I have to tell them, you're going to need to go home and research that. I don't think I'm going to have time to cover it in the short time I have with you. I have 10 to 12 classes. Um, and nurturing that creativity, that imagination. We give them painting activity. So we'll get to see. This uh, spring, near my home where I live at Seabrook, I noticed this field. And I, I kept driving past it. And I kept watching the destruction. And I was like, I've got to get a hold of those people. There's yellow cone flowers all over this property. So I had a buddy that works at uh, Seabrook City. I sent him an email. I said, look, you've got lots of yellow cone flowers that need to be removed and transplanted at schools at the University of Houston Clear Lake. Uh, will you allow me to come on the property? and remove as many as I can get with volunteers. So this is Mr. Vick, our, our monarch, Vick Madamba. 
and he went with me the first day, and we did about two dozen, and uh, he goes, we need to get more people here. These are just some of the activities that we do uh, at the site. Scavenger hunts, can you all hear me? Okay. Scavenger hunts, food chains, life cycles, measurement, graphing, uh, journaling, reading. Um, we do a lot of math and social studies. Watersheds, simple observations. Sometimes they just don't get time to go out and just look. I have to sometimes put a carpet square in a place and I, I want you to just observe. I want you to see what you can see in this small space because you walk out and it's so full of so much going on, I, I want them to, to really zoom in. Uh, compare and contrast, poetry, art, problem solving. This steam is science, technology, uh, engineering, art, and math. So we're trying to embed as much as we can. Um, take the data. When we lower the Purple Martin House, we take data on how many little eggs are in each compartment. We try to put those on a chart, and uh, so there's lots of very sensible, simple things we do, but they make conclusions from that data. This is in the new butterfly garden, and uh, they're all dispersed throughout the area, all 22 of them, and there's no talking because we're painting. We're not going to be interrupted. We're going to stay focused on getting this done, and then voila, you know, some kids are really good at it, and some kids are like, I can't do this. I'm like, well, let's talk about what we can do to help you with that. So, and fun, another fun day. Okay, what does the research say? Uh, there's a great book. Uh, the research su supports school habitats for learning. And Richard Luke was here. Did any of you happen to see him uh, back in 2007 in October? He presented. Um, I got to see him. He was great. His book is one that we recommend to schools for their libraries. Um, he, he's a writer from San Diego, and if you buy this book, you want the updated and expanded version of it because uh, it's just got some great ideas in the back of it to help schools and communities involve children and allow, allowing them to get outside and um, investigate. And uh, Howard Gardner, he's a, a psychologist from Harvard, and he is into the, you know, these kids, we have the naturalist theory, uh, the naturalist learner, the child that needs to be outside, he's got all that energy, he wants to be out exploring. Those are our explorers and our collectors and our scientists. Embrace nature and discover the wonders of the outdoors before maintaining them. The first couple of classes, I don't let them really do a whole lot of weeding at the site because we got to hook them. You know, once they planted something in that pizza garden and they know they're going to get to harvest it, uh, then they're a little more, well, we're going to do 20 minutes of weeding. Get with the buddy, fill the bucket, get your gloves on, and they find grubs, they find worms, they find snails, they find uh, lots and lots of cool stuff in the dirt, so it's, it's all good. This is a, one of our sites that we did in 2004. This is Travis Elementary, and this is ExxonMobil uh, Chemicals uh, in this, the taller man there. He came out that day, and uh, we thought we had this site, you know, we got the grass, the district cleared the grass, we had a great plan with Diana Foss, she came up with the plan, we got the plants, well, we didn't have enough volunteers. So let's go to the next one. So the kids worked hard. We had a pathway. We used logs to be as borders. And uh, you know, we went back to check on it. Well, over the summer, the teacher decided to leave. And she wanted to be a real estate agent. And we did not have a team at that school. So I put this up to say, you know, most of the time they fail because they don't have a Habitat Guardian Stewardship Team, a group of individuals who are going to take responsibility and help out with the site. Okay, so reasons to get into nature, all these things. You know, the, the physical, 
Kids aren't, we've got an obesity problem. These kids are not moving enough. We need to get them out there and move. Well, I have them trailing behind me across campus. And like, Mrs. Brown, slow down. I'm like, look, I'm a lot older than all of you. So you need to be able to keep up with me. So we have fun with that one. Uh, the mental and emotional health. A lot of schools put these habitats in and they find out that the kids calm down. The counselors have a place that they can take the kids when they're having a not so good day. They go out, they look at the, the nature, they see the caterpillars, they see the butterflies. They're ready to go back in and reconnect with their teacher and their classmates. So there's a, but the most important thing is to have fun out there. And these are some of the girls uh, that did some really neat art and writing in their journals. And these are Boy Scouts that first came to our pollinator habitat and they were dispersing seed with mulch with Mark Dolan, I believe that day. And this is my class. And I will have, a, a, it will be bittersweet tomorrow when I have to say goodbye to all of them. Uh, but this was up after the day of dip netting. And you can see they they're all have unique personalities and they have a, uh, they had a great time catching uh, probably over 60 different species of aquatic things that they can identify. And the, and the cool thing is, is we ended up putting them back into our pond. So tomorrow one of their activities will be to see if they can recapture some of those wonderful critters. The students last week before they left, if you could come up with one word to describe our class, what would it be? And these were some of the words. I, I hope they're not too bold for you, but um, <laughs> best, greatest, amazing, awesome, fun, educational, phenomenal, exciting. Subs for greater effectiveness. There's lots of tips that we do, but learning science by doing science. Uh, allowing time for discovery outside. I don't tell them everything. I want to see what they're going to find out. Okay? Have them close their eyes to listen to the sounds of nature. Keep asking questions while learning outside. Do not tell them everything ahead of time. Give the facts after they explore. Scientists frequently do not know what they have found. So that's why we list the questions to research in our journals. This is the outdoor classroom at the Ed White Elementary School that was built by two engineer parents and many volunteers. We need a place that was covered that we could write. Scouts built a uh, storage shed because equipment is really important not to have to drag inside the building, outside the building. And they put a nice window so the kids can pass things out. We have a lovely listening bench so the kids can sit out there and just listen to the birds. And we have two ponds, this pond on the right, and then there's another pond. You can't really see it, but this is where we get a lot of the plants to transfer to the floating wetland project. So we have high school kids working with elementary kids and middle school kids, and lots of exciting things going on. This is one of our rain barrels that we have set up out at that school. And uh, we've got some beautiful flowers and a great place to come for, for solitude. So, I'm sorry I had to rush at the end, but lots of great poetry. I uh, appreciate you all being such a great audience. I hope if there's any questions, if I have time, 